Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today is patch notes. We're going over uh, patch 1.03 for Across the Obelisk. Uh, I don't have any gameplay for this video, but I have played the game since the patch, covered most of the changes, letting you know my thoughts on how those are affecting gameplay and or your strategies. Uh, let's get right into it. With the uh, first off, there is um, more cosmetics. That's a cosmetic thing. We don't need to talk about that. It's each their own with that. Uh, improved draft system. Uh, this is not an improved draft system. This is now a sealed system. For anyone familiar with the concepts of drafts, this is no longer a draft. Uh, Across the Obelisk is the, the limited, random, no perks, uh, very few, very little deck crafting, no towns version of Across the Obelisk. It's much shorter. It's much more random. It's much better for multiplayer, uh, especially if you're trying to do high level, like the, the max level of Across the Obelisk does not reach the same difficulty as a max level adventure. So it is much smoother multiplayer gameplay. Uh, you are no longer drafting cards. This, th this is not an improved draft system. This is now a sealed system. You're given a choice of eight packs. You pick the lesser evils of, you, you pick the three least evil of them and put them to your deck. You have one reroll. You can lock in one before the reroll, or you can lock in cards before the reroll, but you only have one reroll. It'll refresh anything that's not locked in already. Um, and then you will pick from on that. I'm pretty sure that once you pick one, you can't unpick it, because what I'd like to see is yeah, you lock a couple, you reroll, and then you unlock them and you pick from there, but that's not the case. You, If you pick it, it will not reroll. I've said the reroll too many times. Um, it's just a sealed event. It's not even a good sealed event. I I don't want to talk too much on this because I, I can talk for days about the system. I'll do a whole video eventually about an obelisk mode. I've been I've been putting it off because I knew there are changes coming. Uh, these changes are much more dramatic than I expected. Uh, yes, your decks will be more consistent from one run to the next than they were in the past, but they will be less consistent overall. They have a much lower ceiling in uh, your your act one or your your floor one abilities uh yeah yep 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 uh pretty good i mean is it better than the other version no is it easier yes so take it as you will try it out see how you like it yep 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 all right improve random combats so nice thing here we don't have double dipping we don't have columns with seahorses just a column by himself uh, I think that's very nice because when you start stacking in double storms or triple storms, uh, bad things happen to you. I don't think you can ever have a triple storm, though. Anyway, they've added some new monsters. I haven't played the new monsters. Uh, I do like that they are colorful. Act 4 was missing a little color. They're adding a little bit to it. That is great. Uh, I can't tell you much about the monsters. I do like the preview for immunities. I think that's the biggest quality of life change you're going to see here. Now, with random combats, you can run a... Pure burn, pure dark, pure shadow, you know, whatever whatever damage build you're doing in adventure mode, you can now pick your path and see how many monsters have immunity to burn or such like that. And if, uh, yeah, that, that can be super frustrating and you can now path around that. Problem is you still have to remember to look. So uh, be sure to go scout out your path when you enter a new act. Uh, general changes here. Profile system. Yes, please. This is really good. What I'd recommend is if uh, you play a lot more than one of your friends, whenever that friend's on and you're playing with them, load up their profile, play with them on that, so you have equal perks, so that uh, you guys aren't out scaling each other, your, 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 um, your abilities aren't doing more damage than theirs sort of thing, and so you have a similar experience. Uh, very good system, glad they added it. You, you had a workaround with it before, and now it is uh, part of the feature. Uh, I don't know of a way to move your default profile into one of those save profiles. Um, at least not. I mean, like, I do. You just have to copy the files in your game save folders. I'm not going to look there. But if you have any experience with the the save, the, the copying a save system they had before, now you can just do that with your player profiles uh, within the profile management system. There's some folders in there now. Just look for those. I don't want to get too detailed about that. But uh, copy and paste to your heart's content to uh, kind of manipulate your progress and you save your progress between playgroups. Um, Heiner. Heiner now has a much more usable turn one where he gives fortified to the whole team. This is fantastic. Um, Heiner, I will play more. Is Heiner better? 
like Heiner's better. Yes. Is he the best tank now? No. Uh, if you liked Heiner, you'll still like Heiner. If you didn't like Heiner, you'll still not like Heiner. Um, uh, it's just the play pattern is much smoother with him. So I like that a lot. Um, I'll play Heiner probably, you know, 5% more than I did before. Um, the At least with this, I'll play him for other reasons. That's down here in the perks. Uh, the health and armor perks. This is just... Um, if you were going to get health or resistance before... You're going to get them now. It's just a little more bang for your buck. Uh, don't think too much about it. Just still put the points as you see fit. You'll just... If if the next node is the more va efficient one, you should probably think about picking it up. But don't don't stress about it too hard. Don't. It's not, it's not game-defining. It's not going to make or break a run if you picked or did not pick the most efficient nodes on the tree. It's, it's just a minor buff if you're going through the tree or the, the icicle, as I call it. Uh, anyway, uh, this one right here, new burn perk. So, um, there's no good use case for this. The, if there are so many cards and spells and abilities in the game that just apply random buffs and debuffs, I'm sorry, a, a random curses. We're talking about curses here. There is even a pet that applies two curses at once. You cannot use Oculi and this perk at the same time. There are many cards and many characters. You can't use certain cards of theirs because, uh, say, on there's some melee attacks and scouts that apply poison on every hit or apply poison and bleed on every hit. Suddenly, like, the poison is going to soak up that one extra curse you have and the, the poison bleed is going to make this uh, worthless, right? So there are just so many ways to disable this perk just accidentally that there's just so much... You have put so much to make this work that I don't see it being worth it for most people, builds, runs, or one or like you'll randomly turn it off so many times, and and it'll just be so frustrating. So I don't get your hopes up for this. Try it if you want. Uh, I don't see many good use cases for it, especially since everything that applies vulnerable also applies another debuff, which means you can't do this burn plus vulnerable, which means you should have been doing vulnerable to begin with. And the num the math checks out that vulnerable is doing just as much damage as doubling the burn. So why? Also, you have to remember that this burn perk is only affecting the burn damage, not the fire damage the person is taking. So vulnerable versus this, vulnerable is better because then combustion is, is increased. This does not increase combustion damage, which is where a lot of uh, single target burn damage is going to happen. Um, so... Yes. Doesn't increase fireball damage. What doesn't increase disintegrate or meteor damage. This is more headache than it's worth, in my opinion. Play with it as you will. I don't have high hopes for it. Um, you're still going to play reinforce and courage stacking if you wanted to. This is a big one right here. Uh, fortify stacking perk goes to 50 instead of 10. That basically means that... With this perk, Fortify is now Bless, or sorry, Sharp, for Blunt and Fire. So I think that's that's really fun. You can do a lot with that. Uh, play with it as you will. I, th I think that is now, it's, it's basically, we now have Sharp for Fire and Blunt. If you can find ways to get Fortify stacking on a target. Usually Heiner is the one that does this. So more buffs to Heiner. If I'm going to play Heiner, this is why, not because of the Unbreakable change. I think the unbreakable change is just it, this is fantastic, but it's not going to change my my choices. This one right here, I I might build a run based around it. So I think that's a lot of fun to try out. Uh, decay perk. If you're doing it before, you're going to do it now. No no changes there. Just some uh, smoother gameplay. Uh, dark perks. Same thing. If you're going to pick it, you're going to pick it again. Uh, this one right here is the one that's worth talking about. Uh, this is still not a big damage increase. Don't think, like, it's nice. It makes the perk better. The perk is still not very playable. Like, I don't, I'd rather have, like, I'm only picking this perk up on my third or fourth person on the team picking up dark perks because the people applying dark, I want them to get the plus charges. 
uh, the extra person. I want to get this Dark Explosions does more first. And then this is the very last choice of my Dark Perks. So it's better. It's still not like it's still the bottom of the list. So take that as you will. The, the math does not check out on this being much of an increase in damage. Uh, da, da, da. It, OK, sorry, sorry. I, I will backpedal a little here. This does make for smoother gameplay in Act 1 for a Dark Team. Yes. Usually Cup of Death was kind of required to have a smooth Act 1. This makes it so your Act 1 is much more viable. I, I apologize. If you are struggling with Act 1 with a Dark Team, try this. Me personally, I won't still be I still won't run this at all on my dark teams unless, like I said, it's the fourth person on my team picking it up. So I have all four of my team members spending perks to make this happen. But if you're struggling all in act one, this is a great way to smooth out your your damage application because you don't have to get to that 25 stacks to make the explosions happen. So, yes, it is. It does help a lot in that regard. And all these cards, if you're playing them before or not, except for this chant of accuracy. So this is the zero cost chant of accuracy. You can now no longer pass that to a teammate. Uh, this mainly affects Gustav and uh, it it doesn't break him. Uh, I've been playing an M16 run with Gustav and I still play do the exact same play pattern. It's just I have less energy, free energy on Gustav. I like before. I just had, I would throw away energy on him on, on effects like, oh, what do I want to do? I don't have anything to do. Let me spend energy. Now Gustav actually has some requirements of, hey, maybe I can't play all my cards for just no reason. So this is a good change. It uh, does not change play pattern. Like, doesn't change my deck building any, just changes some of my play pattern. Uh, this, I think, of the patch, uh, if I'm making a, a thing, this is the most important one. Boons and injuries no longer reduce the deck size. You now always have to have 15 cards plus boons and energies instead of minus boons and, uh, boons and uh, injuries. So this affects your deck building. Uh, it doesn't affect your, your early acts, you know, act one, two. It will affect your, your turn, your act three and act four towns a little bit. Mainly just you can't cut as many cards. I actually think this will actually cause less headaches. This will make your deck building easier. Because the biggest struggle in Act 3 and Act 4 is like, how do I get down to 15 cards? Because all these cards are useful and powerful. This this is this is great. Um, it does change some of the, the silliness. Uh, there's a couple of people I know that try to maximize the amount of boons in their deck to have like the smallest deck possible. You can't do that anymore. It's a little lost out there. But overall, there's going to be less thinking and heart headache when doing deck constructions in the later parts of the game. Or deck management, not construction. This uh, Sanctify Cap needed to happen. Glad to see that. We'll see how much of an effect it makes. I think that should be enough. I haven't checked the math on my, my damage calculation sheets yet, or my resistance sheets. Um, basically, this should bring Holy back into line with everyone else again. The problem is there's still not many cards that apply Sanctify, so I don't know. Reggie might still struggle, but he does at least have the Bless like apply sanctify stacks equal to amount of bless so he does have that option and it is now viable option again so good place there uh this is a really good one i'll be playing more madness 16 now or at least showcasing it because the reason i haven't been doing my my deck tech videos with madness 16 is because there's just so few shards like the your starting resources are so gimped compared to the other levels of difficulty uh it was kind of skewing the the data like I, I need to present information for, you know, Madness 0 all the way to Madness 16. And Madness 16 was just so far away from the rest of them that it wasn't a good uh, gauge to show people. Now it's much closer to the rest of the group. Uh, and so that might allow, I might, I might put all my videos back up to Madness 16 again because uh, you're not as handicapped in the resources department. So when I show you a deck tech from Madness 16, uh, it won't be that much far off of what you can do at lower madness levels. I hope that makes sense. Uh, madness 16 is much more accessible with this in mind and or just the your deck building is more consistent. It's not it's not that Magnus 16 was harder and that, I mean was was too hard and this makes it easier. It's that your deck building in Madness 16 is now much more in line with what you do at lower difficulties. There's no like 
hard pivot or gap between you know madness 16 and the other difficulties uh i don't think this is going to have much effect other than uh we now have less efficient decks in act three and four so monsters are easier in act three and four i don't really struggle in act three or four with any difficulty level of difficulty though so uh, that's nice and then of course guts has turned from the turn to kill your team to turn to maim your team which is nice uh i don't remember any of these being useful or yeah there's just a bunch of bugs nothing nothing crazy here and yep and then the rest is just the halloween cosmetics so hopefully that was helpful sorry it was a little uh dry at places Thank you for watching. Let me know any more questions you had that I didn't cover. I will eventually be doing a video on the obelisk mode. Uh, my thoughts there on where it stands, maybe. Uh, let me know if that's something you'd like to see. Uh, that'll kind of increase the chance of it to happen. Uh, just really, it's just, it's now a sealed event, not a draft event. It wasn't really a draft event before. Um, but it was it was a lot closer than than this is. This is no longer a draft system. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Peace.